Okay, so first of all, that happy new year. Yeah. And uh, one thing that uh, today is the my session the is the I think this is today is the session the teaching session is the first my teaching session in 2019 the session. And especially I'm so happy about the topic to share the some my experience with my master and uh, share some of the time what I spent with my master. So this is the very special topic I feel. Also I think this is the first time, first session in my life talking about my life with my master. And uh, so that's why I'm so happy to get this opportunity to share <clears throat> some of the my experience with my master. And uh, also the one important thing is that normally we have to understand that uh, we have to understand that how should we have to keep the relation with the master. Quite often people used to ask me that how they can find the right master and the right guru. I always used to tell them you don't have to go and find the right master. Just wait for the right time. The right master will find you. Because sometimes what's happening is that uh, in especially in this now the time, there are a lot of the peoples. A lot of the peoples wants to find some right master and the right <coughs> practice. But the difficulty is that uh, sometimes they could not find the right master. It was the, actually, you can only find the right master. I always used to say that uh, you can only find the right master when you become the right student. Once you become the right student, then you can find the right master. Because there are a lot of the fake masters. I always used to say that there are a lot of the fake masters because they are a lot of the fake student. <laughs> Once they are the fake student, they will be the fake master. It is like a chicken and egg. Once you become the right student, student, you will find the right master. But in my case, I was not a right student when I find my right master. That was, I always was a very different. First time when I met my master, I was very young. I think I was age of eight or nine. I don't know the, what I what it made. I just gave him the one small statue of the Lama Tsongkhapa, a small statue. I have no idea that, that why I give that to him, but I gave it to him, my master. He happily accepted that. He happily accepted that. This is the first memory of the, my master when I was age of eight or nine, like that. But the time went and uh, in my life, what I feel is the most of the impact of the, my master, few things that it's impact me in my life. Because the one thing I always see is the quality of the, my master, he's very strong. I mean the mentally and the very brave, mentally very strong person, very strong. He was been in the prison, more than three to five years in prison, especially, I am not so sure, had you heard about the <coughs> cultural revolution happening in China. In the cultural revolution time, he was get caught. And he was put in the prison. His crime is the teaching the Buddhism become his crime. So that is, a, in the cultural revolution time, it's a crime to preach the Dharma. So it's a preaching the Dharma. So that's why he get caught and he put in the prison three to five years. 
But he always tell me that the, when he was in the prison, he never blamed anyone. He never blamed anyone and he always prayed the one prayer in the prison. If he can help the sentient beings, he may get out of this prison. In his life, he is not going to benefit the any sentient beings. Let him die in the prison. That really prayer, it's a so strong for me. That really prayer, it really helped me a lot in my life. Because the, now that that way, he all, whenever we go for the class, or whenever we go to the class, he never say that he is a sick. He always <coughs> keeps the teaching. He never say that the, he is busy or he is sick or never give any excuse. Even he is not feeling well, he give the class and the, he teaches us. And the, he used to tell us that that's the, his prayer. He prayed and so many times in the, when he was in the prison. So the purpose of the, his levy is the, to benefit the others. That is the very amazing and very touching thing for me. Because one thing in your life, I know that everyone wants to have a very happy life. Everyone's a happy life, everyone wants a very peaceful life, everyone wants that. The big question is that when you can have the peaceful life, when you can have the meaningful life, you can have the very meaningful life if you have the right purpose of the living. What is the purpose of your living? Just you should ask this question. I always used to say that we are not just born to pay all these insurance bills or the house bills or the gas bill and die. We are not born for that. We are not for pay, born for paying the just bill and the die. We have a more than that we have to do. We have a more things to do that we have to find the purpose of the life. The purpose of the life is that to benefit. <laughs> when you strongly, when you choose this purpose, then you, it will change. That moment your life will be get changed. Right now, the, your, when you might say that, oh, my life is not changed. When you think that you can earn some more, it's going to change your life. You are totally wrong. It will not going to change you at all, I can assure you. I have one experience. I was in the DC, Washington DC, after the, my talk in the World Bank. The, you know, the M, they have the two branches. The one they call the international the money, the, the, the IMF, the director of the IMF. I was talking in the car with him. You should not record that. Okay, <laughs> it's a bit personal. My point is that so that the, when you think that you can earn more and that it's going to change your life, that will never happen. That will never happen in your life. If you earn maybe hundred thousand, still you will look for the ten hundred thousand. So then you will look for the millions, billions. It's gone. So that's why the, that should not keep in your mind that the, when you earn more, it will change, going to change your life. It's not, it, that is not going to happen at all. So the thing is that the, you have to choose, choose the right purpose of the living, then your life is going to change. The, when my master told me that the, when he was praying that the, the purpose of the living for him is the benefit in the other, that was a, such a strong message I got from the, my master. That is the song. When I was a kid, he was telling me that story so many times, so many times, so many times, so many times. But I heard, I understand, but it didn't went into the, my heart. Moment that word went into the, my heart, it changed my life. To the same thing, what I told you, maybe you may understand it, but I'm not so sure whether it goes in your heart. The moment it works into your heart, it will change your life. So that the moment. I, it went to the, my heart one time, one time in my life. In the everyone's, I know the sure that the everyone's life, they will be a lot of the up and downs. It goes in the everyone's life. So they will be up and down all in the lives in the up and downs. So, one, in my life also, I've been through the, lots of the sometimes in the life. Not the difficult, I can say like difficulties, not the challenges. Like a one time, when I heard that my cousin brother was passed in the accident, the moment is so difficult for me to accept it. Because it was so close. We grown up. We grown up together. We spent a lot of our childhood time together. Suddenly, when I heard that he passed away in such an accident, 
the moment was so difficult for me to accept. Not plus when I see my father's crime, my brother's crime, it makes it more difficult for me to accept. It may have I think it you all may have that experience. When you lose someone, first it is very difficult to accept it. Secondly, what what you can see with your family that that the pain or the suffering it makes it more difficult to accept it. I went through that. So very difficult for me. But at that moment, my teacher was with me, who was mentally supporting me, not only me, for my parents. He was supporting me, mentally supporting me. In my life, that was the, such a moment that the, my master really he supported me a lot of that moment. That the moment it is it comes to the everyone's life. I know that it comes to the everyone's life. So, so that the moment that the, my master, he, one thing is, as I mentioned before, my master is so strong, so strong, and uh, he tells us some stories of the, his own life. That the, his own life is, he's telling me the story that the one thing, the moment that the, when he was, got caught in the prison, he was got caught in the prison, so, not only they was put him in the prison, that time they don't serve the food. Because at that time the whole the China having the lack of the food. So they you do not have any food to eat much food to eat in the prison. So he told me that his prison inmate when they go to the walk in the field, when they see the mouse or any insect, they, have, they kill and eat God. He was so hungry that nothing to eat. But he told me one thing that he never did like that to go and hurt other. He never did that. That's really give me the soul, I mean the strong message. So even like this condition like that, still, still he refrained. Still he didn't commit it any negative negative karma. Still he was so hungry. But he did not committed the negative karma. So that message, what I learned from the, that message was still, if we can be the strong from the inside, whatever the foods and the shelters, whatever, we can adjust it. If we become so weak from the inside, it doesn't matter the, what food you eat, how luxurious like you are having it, you will still, there will be the pain. So once you from the very strong, is so that moment I thought that uh, I should be the very strong. Then, then I thought that the uh, one thing that uh, I lose the my cousin. Not that time. Also, a lot of things happens to me. One of the my cousin's close friend committed the suicide. Many things happen. So, so when I all know, so then I thought the one thing that the uh, oh I should be the strong. To be the strong, what I need, I need the one purpose. Purpose is that the, my purpose life was how I can help the people who are having like these problems or difficulties, then I try to find some way how can I help the others. But the one thing is that the, in the life, I know that the one thing in my life that I've really learned that the, in this world, there are a lot of the good people. Good people. Sometimes that the, these all good people are not knowing the, each other, not getting the connected each other. So, then the second thing is that the whatever the good thing, whatever the good thing, if you started to do it, whatever the good thing, if you started to do it, I'm sure that the result always comes very good. Because I want to share the one thing that the, so, one thing that the, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure whether you may know or the, whether you may know or the, whether you may not know. I started the one project. That's a, a two years back. I just started the one project for the, the feeding the poor people, giving the food for the poor people, the poor people. And uh, <clears throat> I start that project with a three hundred dollar, three hundred dollar around maybe twenty nine thousand into the group list of three hundred dollars. So three hundred dollar. Now I start, I told my student now. Okay, we will start up that project. We'll go. Now we'll make the food and we'll distribute for the food for the homeless people and uh, we will give the food for the poor people. Then the, what happened is that the, when we started with the $300, now we are feeding around 1,300 something twice a week. 
every week, twice times. So we're feeding the 1,300 lunch box for people we are feeding. And uh, when we are doing like this, the charity work, one met uh, one lady in the Mongolia. And uh, she heard about the dust project and the she donated the one very, 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 very precious and valuable thing. Can you imagine that to what she gave to us? She just gave her wedding ring for that project. Go wedding ring. She is not a widow. She is not a divorcee. But still, for the widow and the divorcee, maybe the wedding ring might not be that valuable. <laughs> Well, not a divorcee, not the, the video she donated. Really, that is so precious and valuable. And the, I was normally I don't carry something like the valuable things. That the wedding ring I was always carrying up till the when I can pass over to the the students who are handling the, that project. So then I give to the that, that to my students who are handling the project, and I get that the wedding ring, and I told them, okay, now that sell that. And the money will be used to the food project as I wish. After maybe several months later, I called them with how much money you get care for that wedding ring. The student told me they could not sell it at all. They could not dare to sell that wedding ring. It is so precious. So precious. So the, why I'm saying all this is sometimes when you do that, there are a lot of people's things in this world. I see that a lot of the thing, people, good people, sometimes these good qualities also not get activated. Every human has the positive and negative qualities. Every human has that. So what you have to do is you have to activate the positive qualities. When you can activate the, your positive qualities, others positive qualities, then only, then you can see the good human surrounding you. To activating the good qualities, that is the one main important job of the master. So my master did that. He activated my positive qualities. Actually, when I was a kid, I'm, sh I, I'm sure, I'm hundred percent sure that I don't have the, any positive qualities because I'm so lazy, so naughty. I don't study the properly. I don't do the good thing. But anyhow, my master found the one small good quality is me, and he activated that in me. So that the things that the, these are right now, the whatever these charity activities, whatever I did, I always feel that was the plus from the, my master. No one such a, can believe that the, with the three hundred dollar we started the something we're doing and the, now we reach up with the one thousand three hundred foods we are delivering, delivering to the food. And then the most important thing is that we deliver, deli delivering the food. <laughs> I always feel that these kids who go to the deliver the food, they should pay the respect for the people, respect, feed the soul. Now I what I learn is that the feeding the stomach is the one thing. Feeding the human soul is the most second, most important thing is that. Today you get hungry, you get the food, you will forget about hunger. Someone hurt you, someone humiliated you, you will never forget that whole your life. Even that person says sorry to you, but still one side of your mind, you will think that what the person has done to you. So that's why the in my master, the master, the one of the, my master's life, my master liked that the one thing that the, even he got the prison, put in the prison. Still, he don't have any negative feelings that are got so amazing surprise. Because he was got in the prison, put in the prison, <coughs> charging him that the, you are teaching the Dharma. Ordinary people. If you look at some ordinary people, it happens like that. Their whole life they will carry the negative feeling. In my master, he never carry any negative feeling. That was the such a big lesson to him. So that's why in my life, in my life, I feel the different peoples, and but I always try to be like him, not carrying the, any negative feeling. Even someone hurt directly or indirectly, whatever happens, I never carry the, any negative feelings of other. That is the one very important thing in the life. You should learn that. Once you have to live very happily in the life, you should not have carry the, any negative feeling for the others. I'm sure you might think that. I always used to say that different places. Some people say, oh, they don't have any people whom they dislike. They don't carry any negative feeling anyone to anyone. I, many people used to tell me that. When I told them, you know that Tonglen practice, giving and taking meditation, no? When I tell you, meditate and think the person whom you dislike and uh, take their suffering or negative qualities. When I introduce that practice, 
many people used to tell me, in their life, they don't have any person whom they dislike. I always used to tell the one simple thing, if there is a no person whom you dislike, think the election. <laughs> then you will find someone whom you dislike. Think about election, definitely, then you will find someone whom you dislike and someone you like. So, but don't carry any negative feeling towards them, whoever, okay, don't carry any, do this when you are carrying the negative feelings toward them, that makes your life more difficult, more unhappy. So that's why I learned from the, my master that even he was put in the jail and the charge with the teaching, the Dharma, but still he don't carry any negative feelings toward them who put them in him in the jail. He don't have any negative feelings for them. That is the most, I mean the biggest lesson I learned from him, not through the wood. Through the, his life story I learned that. That is the one very important message. Then the one thing is that the, when I met, then the later the one time, I went to see the, my master, I went to see the, my master, and the, my master asked me the one question. Asked me the one question. And the, his, he usually, main of the, his practice, he do the, you know, the law, law of the karma. His main practice, he do the law of the karma practice. Law of the karma practice is a very simple. If you do good, you will get the good things. If you do the bad, you will do the bad things. You know that, no? I think you all study that. Exactly. That is a very simple, I mean, the theory of the law of the karma. His main practice is that he too much, too much emphasis, very deep practice, he do the law of the karma practice. So law of the karma practices he do, and uh, he asked me the one question, one time, one question. His question is that, uh, what do you think? What do you think? That uh, once you once you did something, something wrong, without knowing by the anybody, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that when you do something wrong and no one knows about it? How do you feel about that, that action? Do that action will bring something negative result or not? So. Theoretically, I know everyone say yes, I know that. Practically, you will not. Yeah, practically, I'm not so sure. Really, you feel that or not, that I'm not very sure. Theoretically, everyone says that yes. But the, my master case, he practically, he was very emphasizing and telling me the one thing that it will bring the negative result. It will bring the negative result. Very emphasizing on that. I didn't know. I was quite young. But I didn't know that the importance of the, that message, I didn't know. Because in, we are in the monastery, when we are studying the law of the karma, every time we say that when you do the wrong thing, you will get the negative result. When you do the wrong thing, wrong result you will get. But when my master, he was emphasized that time, the quite very strong, few times, yeah, you will get a bad result. But I didn't know the importance of the, that message. But one time, I was traveling. I was traveling and uh, I was traveling. It was, um, um, I still very clearly remember that I was in the Kathmandu airport. Kathmandu airport and the, I'm carrying the luggage and it's an overweight, overweight luggage. So I think 10 or 15 kg, I don't remember exactly. So then the officer told me that the, I have to pay the tax for the excess baggage. So 3,000 Nepali rupees, 3,000 Nepali rupees. So it will be around maybe. 1,700 Indian rupees. Yeah, that custom officer told me that I have to pay for it. So then he can pay the bills. Then a the few minutes later, custom officer changed and he told me that the, if I pay him 500 ru Nepali rupees, it will be the 300 Indian rupees. 300 rupees, he will let me go. You know that though, sometimes that he want to give it something for the drink, the tea. The moments I was thinking, yeah, if I pay him the 500 rupees, that means that I can save quite a lot of money. Obviously, yeah, he was letting me go. He was the officer, he had the authority and he was letting me go, paying the 500 rupees and letting me go. I don't have to pay the 300, 300 oh, sorry, 3,000. 3,000 rupees, I don't have to pay 500 rupees. The moments later, I just remember that my master's would. And you do the wrong things, you have to carry the negative reason. That won't tickle the my mind, I say, no, I will pay 3,000 3, rupees. That the moment he was a little bit shocked. 
No, I'm saying 500 rupees, you can go. 500 rupees, I will get it. No, I will say, I will pay the 3,000. Give me the bill, I will pay it for the government. So that is the master word. So now you look at this point. This point, I know that the, some people feel I've done this, such a stupid thing. I can save the 200, 2,500 rupees. I can save it. Then some people will tell the 2,500 rupees that I can give to the poor people. Am I right? 2,500 rupees. I can buy the medicine and give to the people who don't have the money to buy the medicine. Right? These all calculations comes in the mind. I know that. I know that. What? I know that these old calculations, I'm not saying these old calculations are wrong, okay? They have the logics, they have the reasons, I know that. But these old calculations, the logic, they is, but these also, this is the, in the Tibetan, we have the one saying, killing a fish and giving, the, giving to the hungry dog. Did you get my point? Killing a fish and oh, yeah, giving yeah. to the hungry dog, okay? First you kill the fish. Then you will feed the hungry dog. No, so this is something you are doing something like that. First you do the something wrong to fix it. You are doing the something right. Even you do the right, you cannot fix that the wrong what you have did. So this is the word really in my master. So this is the one, not only that one incident in my life. So many incidents like these challenges comes in your my life. So many challenges in the in my life what to do and how to do so many challenges like this and the incidents comes into my life. So, but the, he's the message, what he did, that message really helped me to the, how I have to make the decision. Because sometimes in your life, I also feel that, that sometimes when you have to make the decision, sometimes you will get confused to make the which is the right and the wrong decision. Sometimes it's very difficult, especially when you look for the argument or the two people's argument side. When your two peoples are arguing each other, it's a very difficult to find out which is the who is the right and who is the wrong. It's a very difficult. When the two persons are arguing each other. Because the both sides have the logics. They carry the both sides, they will carry the logic. Both sides have the reasons and the logics. Both sides will have it. Now the, to find the right way, to find the right path, it is the most important to find the right path. And the true that the, my masters that give message really it helped me. Because the, his master's message is a very simple that the, he talks about the karma. When you do the right things, right reason. When you do the wrong things, you will get the wrong reason. So right thing and the right reason and the wrong thing, wrong reason. Practically, it helped me so many things in my life to solve the issues and the things in my life, the issues. There was one time, I think I, I'm not so sure, I've shared one time. One time, the, what happened is I was traveling from Bangalore to the Gohati or somewhere I was traveling. So once I reached the Bangalore, so my student forget the, his ID, ID card, to bring from the monastery the ID card. So then we are in the airport. So I was, a lot of the questions comes into my mind. What should I do? What should I do? Shall I tell the lie? Tell them, oh, ID card will with me. I just fall when I come into the airport. That is the one lie I can use. So, what of those, whether I should tell the lie, whether I should tell the truth, that's the one thing. I think in, you just look at it in your life. I think sometimes you have, you have or the, maybe I'm not so sure, you have or sometimes you try to tell the lie. Even you know it's a lie, but you try to tell the lie to make others happy or whatever the reasons. So that moment that I have a lot of thoughts came to the mind, mind that the, whether I should tell the lie. Or whether I should tell the truth. So lots of the questions came to mind when I was traveling to the airport. Maybe. So I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. 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 Hmm? This is too too channel. So, so yeah, there's a lot of the thought that came up in the, my mind. So I'm not sure. 
that, that time, so then I decided that well, no matter whatever happens, I should tell the truth. Because my master always said, when you do the right thing, you will get the right result. When you do the wrong things, you will get the wrong result. That is the one he emphasizes so much, because of his main practice is the law of the karma. So then the, in the airport, I told Larry to, I forgot. He forget to bring the ID card. So moments when I was telling him, I was worried that, not allow me to go. Once I cannot go, maybe I have to stay one day. I will miss the, all the program in the, which is going to happen in the Sikkim. So I you know that it's going to finish. But I told the truth. But finally, the very, very gentle guy, the security person, and the, he let me go in. But one thing here you have to know that when I'm saying to do the right thing, you will get the right result. But sometimes, when you do the, everything very rightly, I'm sure that sometimes you will not get the what you right result. You might get the any difficulties. When you face the difficulties, when you something face the difficulty, most important thing is that you always have to stick on the doing the right things. Because otherwise the what I happen is that when you do the small the right things, first when you do the many good things and the right things, but the, when you face the any difficulties, then suddenly you will lose the all the I mean the hopes and the courage that happens. Because in my own experience with the many students, my own experience that the Sometimes, when they come to do the, some very good things, first they come with a very emotional, very do the some things, they do some things. When the time pass, they lose that emotion or excitement or the that, then slowly they will get tired to do the many good things that happens. So that's why the something like that, that's why the whatever, no matter the whatever you do, the things, you should not, you should not get away from the right track. So that's the one my master, Whenever he says something, whenever he decided to do something, he will keep the continuation of the doing of that. That is the, his one third quality I want to show him. Whenever he says that he will do, he will keep on the doing it. He will never leave something between the doing the things. So, that is the one third quality. Now, the, now, the, now I will share the, my masters the, how he had the visions and the, his, his vision. I have a his vision. Okay, maybe before that, I just thought to share the one thing. In 2018, I was mostly I was not in a, I was not in Sarah, in Balakup, you know, 2018, I was not in Sarah. And then my master, I hear the one advice to me is that uh, whenever I go out, I should come once and back to the monastery. That he advised to me, I have to come back once. So that's why. In the 2018 whole year, I was not in Sarah, so I have to back in the 2018. Once in the 2018, I have to back. So that was the 2000, 2018 December, I think 31st, early morning, 3 a.m. I reached the Sarah. So that means that the 2018, I came back to the Sarah. 2019. Also, I was in Sarah. Now I can go whole 2019 out of the Sarah. <laughs> Only now 2020, I have to come back. But the, but the thing is that my master. So that's why the uh, maybe I can be wrong. That's why the I was flying from Patna. I was in Patna, so I have to reach before 31st of the December back to the Sarah. So that's why I was have to. So I was in both Gaya. I was having some teaching program. Even I could not finish the whole the program because of the, my master's work. So that's why I was flying from the Patna to come back on 30 December night. I was took the flight from Patna from the 30 December night to coming back to Sarah. My main purpose was coming to the Sarah. Just my master's work. Masters have told me to do that. So I'm just coming. I have no any purpose to come being back to the Sarah. But the one thing is a very amazing that the, in the flight was was taking the flight from the Patna, 30 December, my flight from the Patna to the Bangalore. I never experienced such a smooth flight in all my life. <laughs> in this world, maybe I travel in the Cathay, I travel in the KLM, I travel in the most of the world famous airline. Alaska, JetBlue, American Airlines, all the famous airlines have flight, but that is the most smooth, smooth, most smooth flight I ever had. That time I asked my student, do you feel the difference? He said, no, same, same, what the difference? But I 
feel very different. I asked him that three times of question. Say, two or four times, do you feel very small? Mm. And he said, <coughs> but my conclusion, because I feel the very small, I feel a very enjoyable flight because I'm doing something that my master told me to do. That is the result I got because of the following that my master is the word I'm following that. That is the result. So in the law of the karma, it said that you feel the joy because of the result of the, what you do, there's something good. In that flight, two hours and the 30 minutes that flight, my student feel nothing special. Nothing special. I feel so special. Very special. Plus you won't believe that. I, I, I asked them that I want to the window seat. They gave me the most the back seat near of the tournament, near of the restaurant. Many people don't know, oh, worst seat, that is the worst seat. For me, I never know that that is the best seat. So that is something I feel so nice and so enjoy. I never, as I told I never experienced such a flight. But I'm not saying the other airlines are bad, okay? <laughs> Please don't misunderstand me. I didn't feel them. But this is the most, I mean, the smoothest flight I had. So that's the thing that I feel that joy. Because of that joy or the happiness is a result of the doing the good things. Because the, my main purpose is to come back to the Sarah. Because the, my master told that. So that's why I just reached the Sarah on the 31st of the December. So as the, my master's will. So then the, what we did is that the, then the, my master's. So that the, so yeah. So then the, my master's. The one other thing is that my master always the my master when we are having the class sessions with the, my master. The most interesting thing I can remember that my master is that does usually um, many of the you know him, many of my not. He was a one of the greatest debater, one of the greatest debate, and the, he, no one can debate him in the debate. For me, he is like a Nagarjuna. I always feel that the, even the Nagarjuna is alive. Nagarjuna can't be better than the, him at all. That's my feeling. Okay, it's not going. I'm not saying that the Nagarjuna is not that great. Okay, Nagarjuna is great. For me, the master is the Nagarjuna. For me, okay, is a really that he can build the, such a theory. Sometimes I make a one joke, I make a joke, okay? Because the Nagarjuna become, you know the why the Nagarjuna become the famous. Actually, Nagarjuna become the very famous because the Lama Tsongkhapa become the brand ambassador of the Nagarjuna. Yeah. He make the Nagarjuna very famous. <laughs> if you look at the, before the Lama Tsongkhapa, Nagarjuna is not famous at all, Tibetan history. Before that, Shantarakshita was very famous because he came to the Tibet. He became the master of the king. Now you can imagine. Someone become the master of the king. Officially, he will become the so famous, no? So Shantarakshita was so famous. But later on, Lama Tsongkhapa became a so made the Nagarjuna so famous. But the still, when the Lama Tsongkhapa is not famous, the Nagarjuna cannot become the famous. Lama Tsongkhapa become famous. You know the why? Not because of the his work. That might be, I might be a little bit sarcastic by saying, but there is a truth in that because of the Mongol kings makes the Lama Tsongkhapa famous. Because Mongol kings, they ruled the all over the country, China and the Tibet grew over the country and the, these Mongol kings, Mongol king told the Lama Tsongkhapa their master. Everyone had to worship, everyone had to practice it. <coughs> so that is the one history truth, okay? So then the Lama Tsongkhapa become famous, Lama Tsongkhapa made the Nagarjuna famous. So that's why these holes are the, but there is a one truth, but that might be very bitter, okay, bitter truth, okay, one thing, maybe two years, two or three years back, one, I published the one book in the Taiwan, that book has become the bestseller, I think, okay, that should not be recorded, okay, <laughs> that's become the bestseller, you know the, how it become the bestseller? <laughs> Two way. Editor give the very fantastic name of the book. How to become the how to how to overcome the stress in the within the 14 days. Name, <laughs> advertisement company, these two work very well and book become the best seller. <laughs> that become the best seller. How it goes, the world is going like that way, really. This is going to go over. This is the how they go. Now once you reach in the best seller. Then the second people will buy it without knowing the what is content is there. Just go in there and buy it. They say, oh, it's a bestseller. Because it came the bestseller. This all things that goes on the advertisement company, is an editor, all they work together to make the bestseller, okay? But the today, I'm not ending branding the my master, okay? I don't want to make him such a bestseller master, okay? But today I'm telling the what the, in the reality, what truth about him, I'm telling him. 
about my master. Okay? This is the what the reality truth. So that's why the he have to publish the one book. He's published the one book and the that book I think hardly maybe not not many people buy that. Because the even the many people buy that they will not understand it at all. He talk a, such a profound of the philosophy. Such a profound of the philosophy and the people cannot understand. So once they cannot understand the book, no one will buy that book. So that's why, one thing that, that's why the, my master, when he explained that, especially with the emptiness point, it is very difficult to understand. Because the, I think that whenever he gave the teaching, he touched the very deepest point, most the profound the philosophy point, he touched and he will explain that. So there is a saying that the, when the Lama Tsongkhapa had the vision of the Manjushri Buddha, Manjushri Buddha explained a lot of the things, a lot of the things about the emptiness, Lama Tsongkhapa, the emptiness, and the Lama Tsongkhapa could not understand it. So once the Lama Tsongkhapa could not understand it, the Manjushri Buddha told the Lama Tsongkhapa that once you cannot understand it, you just note down when the times comes, you will understand. Same thing like that it happened in the mind. When my master sometimes he talked a very deep philosophy point, sometimes I cannot understand it. Now slowly I'm getting the his point, what he's talking, the very profound of the points of the emptiness. Like a very simple way, I will tell you the one thing. Normally, this is like an emptiness. Emptiness is such a point that the, if you read the book, five minutes of the emptiness, I'm sure you will understand something. If you read the ten minutes of about emptiness, you, I'm sure you will understand something. But the difference is that the, some people, when they read, they can't understand something, and they will tell now they understand the emptiness at all. Some people will say that, oh, still they could not understand. That's the only difference. Otherwise, the, the, otherwise everyone, when they read something, they will get something, the emptiness, in their mind. So that's why. <coughs> That's why the what is happening. So, so my point is that's why the what I'm saying is that when the, my master, when he explained about the emptiness, that time when I cannot understand it, that time I always feel that I don't understand the emptiness at all. I don't understand the emptiness at all because the my master's explained is so deep about emptiness. Still, I study the so many years of the emptiness. I always feel that I don't understand. It. Then the, my master told me the one thing: now don't go for meditate for the emptiness. Just go for the purification of the negative karma. He told me purification of negative karma. So many, I mean, so then why I stopped the thinking of the emptiness and the practice of the went through the purification. As the master said. Then slowly, then, then now later on I got the more clear understanding of the emptiness. More clear understanding of the emptiness. Because I all feel that these are the blessings of the my master. So that makes me to understand the emptiness. Because the emptiness point is the such a, such a, such a, such a tricky point. Very tricky point. That is a very tricky point. Why I'm saying the tricky point is that I met one person, he came to the Sarah. I don't know that some of in the monastery, they sent that person to me. Then the, he was telling me the one thing that the, about the emptiness. Then he told me that the emptiness theory, when he practiced emptiness theory, he can see like a house. Still he can see the emptiness of the house. Whatever object he see, he can clearly see the nature of the empty of the, that object very clearly. So he was telling me to watch it at that state, person who can perceive or realize emptiness directly. So I told in the philosophy term we call that as a darshan mark, you know darshan mark, third part. So then he told, oh, then he told me that he had now reached at that part, third part, darshan mark. He himself declared that he was reached the third part. <laughs> So that might happen, a lot light happens like that, no? Everyone such a when my master was the giving the emptiness teaching, I could not declare anything because he used the explanation so profound that I could not get it at all. <laughs> that is the one master, really that the, that is but otherwise if you there is no one such a so master who can explain the emptiness so deep to you. I'm sure you will declare that now you realize the emptiness and I'm sure that you will declare that now you're going to teach back Buddha the emptiness. What is the emptiness? Is <laughs> that is a, that what happens. This is the happening. So the happenings all around, this is the happening. So that's why you need a very perfect master. So that's why the second thing is the why my master gives the very deep philosophy that I always used to say the one thing. When you look at the 
every Buddhism teaching are like that. Now it becomes the, not a Buddhism or philosophy, it becomes the moral science teaching. What I'm seeing the moral science teaching, if it's a Buddhist philosophy, it should be the bring the logic. Lots of the logics, lot of the evidence to prove what you are saying. Now the many of the teaching, Buddhism teaching is a very simple thing they taught. One person, he, that person, she is a lot of Buddhist, so she told me one thing. She told me, she attended a lot of the Buddhist teaching. Then she told me, the, why all these Buddhist master talk a very childish topic? Which can I understand very easily. Even without going to this teaching, I know all these topics. <coughs> very true. My master was the one, real the Buddhist master, who really teach the deep philosophy. That's a Buddhist master, really Buddhist master. Now if you look at the, the many Buddhist teaching, you will understand all the things. Because the old was a childish topic. Oh, no, do such a thing, no, do that thing, then do that thing. And you will get amazed. You will get amazed. Wow, very nice talk. You get amazed because they taught you something you under already understand. Now you are amazing. You are getting surprised. When someone teaches you which you cannot understand it, you will reject them. So that my master was that master who really teach the Buddhism, I should say. Now if you look at the many of the topics with this teaching and master, they go to very simple topics, very simple childish things. So that is the why, so that's why the, my master, whenever he gives the teaching, I mean the public teaching, no one can understand. No one can understand, maybe I might be wrong, many of them could not understand. One time my master went to Taiwan and the Taiwan and he gave the teaching. That time the one Lama, I was asking how he gave the teaching. So he told that I think he did the very profound teaching. So I asked him the truth of student understand. But the translator, then the Mahi Lama told me one very funny incident that when he was giving such a deep philosophy teaching, the translator told that the, he will getting very frustrated that he could not translate the my master <laughs> word at all. Because he could not understand it at all. So that is the real the my master stuff. When he did the very deep philosophies and he gave the teachings. So even then in my time he gave a lot of deep teachings. So that time I didn't understand it at all. What he was talking about. Now I'm getting the more and more clear understanding of the what he was teaching. So that's why. That's why the what happened is that that's why the that's why the my master the so I think that if you join the my master teaching before, I'm sure that the, his Teaching is quite up. I think that for well, the first one who visited the city, yes. I think they have, yeah, is in his teaching. He's always the give the teaching is not that simple things. Goes to the very deep points. That that he's the very unique style, unique styles, unique style, very deep points. Because right now the all the people, because I know that I've been in the whole my life giving the teaching in one country to another country, and I have one experience. Good teaching nowadays means make the people laugh. Let them enjoy and myself act a little bit like a crazy laugh. So then you feel, wow, that's a good teaching. Because you enjoy it. That is what happened. I have a one ex one student, later she became my student. She told me when she joined the first time of my teaching, she just thought that I will not follow this crazy monk. <laughs> laugh and shout like that. She told me that. But the later, what is happening is right now, people start with enjoying it. So start with enjoying it and they told me it was a good teaching. But in the reality, my master's style is totally different. He was always very serious with the teaching. Because he takes the teaching as a very serious job. But for me, I don't take the teaching as a serious job. Because I don't prepare. When I come, I just talk. I don't take it as serious much as my master's take. My master takes the teaching job as a very serious job to him. So that's why when he explains, no jokes. In the reality sense of the mind master is a great sense of the I mean the humor sense of the humor. When he tells the jokes, very, he has a lots of jokes. But in the teaching time he never tells the jokes. But the thing is that the night now, so that is the something like that. Why I'm saying the all this is I'm just introducing the how the my master is. That I'm just introducing. He's like that of the master. But the as I mentioned that before, he point find out something, the positive qualities me, and that he activated in me. So really, I'm so grateful for him. Example, the one thing is that the, in the monastery, when we are studying in the monastery, we have to have a lot of the pujas and the positions. I never go to the pujas and the priests. I only go to the class and the debate. I don't like to go to these pujas. 
So that time when the monks, some monks or the student not going to puja, that time, not an hour, okay? That time, it's a 1993 or 94, like that time, uh, it is not that good. It's something like I'm not a good student. So my master <coughs> never forced me to go to the teachings. Sorry, not forced me to go to the pujas. Okay, can you burn the incense with the outside? It's burning the heart. Okay, outside maybe it's <coughs> too much. So, so he never forced me that. He never forced me. He will let me do the whatever I want. That is a something really. He was a very sense of the openness, of very open. He never forced me to do this and that and this and never. Number one. Even the traditionally, at the, he was brought in a very traditional monastery, but he would never do the force. That I and the one time I brought the one small young student to him and I asked him the master to pray him that whether he can learn the philosophy very well. He asked me the one question. Do that the, my small student, do he have the interest to learn the philosophy? He have the interest of So he told me that if you don't have the interest, don't force him. If you have the interest to learn, then force him. That is a, such a message my master gave it to me. Now, I built up the monastery in the Nepal. I'm not so sure whether you can build up the monastery. These are around the 55 monks. My target is to bring our 300 monks training over there and the, that I built up the monastery. So that the same thing, my master, that gave me the idea that they're not what you look at the interest. When they have the interest, then let them first. So that's why in the, my monastery, now the, what I'm trying to do is I'm not to foster any kids. I want to brought them in a very liberal way. Liberal way that if you know the ceremony, so they are not allowed to play the cricket and the football is not allowed. If, if you get caught to the playing the football, you have to pay the fine, maybe 300 rupees or 500 rupees. But in my monastery in Nepal, I built the playground for the kids to play the football, play the games. Because my master is so open. That's a he led to very open in the sense. Because the, he only focused on the Buddha's rules. What Buddha never told the monks cannot play the football. So that's why in the, my monastery, I built a playground. Maybe in the nature, if you come to the my monastery in Nepal, you will see the monks will play the football. One more thing is so I want to build up the team, football team of the my monastery in Nepal. <laughs> that I'm, I'm so, because my master is so open and the, he was not like that to such a very conservative the person. No? He was very open. With, that really the time is, but only thing is that I will educate them at the very well. I will take care of the, their food very well. And I will brought them in a very liberal way. Liberal and a very friendly way. But still, you can see that these old monks are like brought up from a very poor background. Some are semi-orphans, some are orphans, or a very poor background. So I brought, and uh, it's like a, the system is like a Saraji school. They are studying the modern education, plus they have to study the Buddhism, and the plus every morning they have to go through the meditation sessions. And yeah, they are doing the kids, they are doing that. But one thing, very interesting, uh, not an interesting, very funny thing is that the, because even I don't stay too much in the, my monastery in the Nepal. So when I went out and I came back, and one of the small monks saw me, and the, he asked me that, the, why you came back to monastery? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so, so he was asking me, you know, you came back. So then I told him that the, I just came back to see how you all are doing good, or how you all are doing. So, yeah, so this is the, something like that, but this is the, when some, this is the one in the, when I'm building that monastery, so I, you know, the blueprints of the, my monastery, I bring to the show to the, my master, so the priest pray for the, that the, my building, I'm building the monastery, my master, it's so very good. And I asked the master, please sign on the blueprint of the monastery. So my master said he could not see. And then I asked him, can you press the, your thumb on the map, the, the blueprint of the monastery? Yeah, he said he pressed it. Then I thought, now I'm sure that it will go very well. I have the confidence. So then I went to build the monastery. When I was building the monastery, it was in the one small mountain. So I asked the contract construction company to cut the mountain. They were so scared that really it will be very dangerous. So I told him that don't worry, just go on a cut. Whatever happens, I will take the full responsibility. They went on a cut. And they asked me only bring the three, build the three floor. I didn't listen to them and I just went for the fourth floor. When I was building four floor, I think you have heard about the government through the Nepal earthquake. Earthquake time, many monasteries got to collapse and the crack. 
my monastery, my monastery, nothing happened. I don't feel that is a miracle. I feel that is the blessing with my master, it carried the my master. So that it, that it didn't crack even the small crack in the my monastery. Mm. So it went so well. So that's why when I was the building the hole, then the, I was telling the, all the construction company to the do that and this and the cut here and the deal. They were so scared and they told me it will be not safe at all. Especially it's on the hillside. Especially the, when they do the soil, soil test, it is not that good soil the condition. But I didn't listen to them. I just went to what I, what I want, but nothing happened, especially at the earthquake time. So I really feel that is the blessing of the my master. Now here the, I will come with the one conclusion. In my life, no one knows that the, whether it's a really the my master blessing or not. It's, it, that is a not importance. But the most important is that it, my feeling of the my master's blessing, it gives me a lot of the confidence. With that confidence, I do a lot of the things in my life and it, everything it went so well. Because of the confidence. Confidence I got from the my faith and the, my devote to the my masters. And then I always feel that that gave me the sum of the confidence and faith. And plus the, his instruction, that really helped me a lot of the, he gave a lot of the instructions and the words to me, to the, how I have to deal with the things in the world. That really helped me so a lot. So this is the things that I just thought to share with you, that the, my masters and the, my life experience. So, yeah. So maybe, so I will stop here. And uh, one other thing is, I'm, yeah, so I'm in the... I just want to talk the one thing, maybe some might you have the interest of that. Because last time I spoke with, the, I'm, I'm not so sure that you all know Ujwal, you know the Ujwal? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, you know Ujwal, no? Yeah, I spoke with the Ujwal. And uh, Lake Sola, I think you know the Lake Sola, no? Lake Sola, you know Lake Sola. Then I spoke with the Raf and the old, and I talked with that the one thing that, the, and now I have the monastery in Nepal and I'm building the guest house over there. So I told that uh, now, because of that, I could not come so often to the now, especially the India, I could not come so often. So now if there are any students from here, or the Sarah, if they're willing to do the some like a oh, seven days retreat like that in the Nepal, then I, then I can make up the one retreat program in the, my monastery in Nepal. If you're interested, you can join. And I told that at that time, the whoever comes to the my monastery, traveling expense that you have to cover up while you're staying there, the food and the place to stay that uh, my monastery in Nepal will cover it up. Okay. So that is you just if you're later on, if you're future, if you're interested, so maybe you can contact with the Ujwal or Lake Sola. Okay, Lake Sola contact. So because I'm, why I'm thinking is that uh, in the normally when I travel out to the India, many places we do a lot of the retreat, no? Rigid programs and the rigid program we are having. So now I don't come as now I don't live that much as a India as a before because of the my traveling programs. So if you are interested on that program for one week like that in the coming to the Nepal or Kathmandu, please keep contact with the Ujwal or the Lexola, okay? Lexola and the Ujwal you just contact with them. So that is now now I'm planning to have like a seven days free program in the Nepal Kathmandu, in the my special uh, in the my monastery. So monastery that when it will come at that that time because right now I'm building the guest house also so over there guest house going to finish over there guest house and the dormitory the I mean, army I'm building up the more rooms of the dormitory. So once it's finished so that's it. That I just thought to inform you for seven days, okay? Like that, okay? If you stay more than seven days, then you have to pay, okay? <laughs> 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 yes, 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 okay. What's the monastery called? Uh, Thangar Dejin Churi. Thangar Dejin. It's uh, Thangar Dejin Churi. So the monastery is just uh, nearby. I mean, the, this one very holy mountain called the Monkey Temple. The legendary, it said it's a... Uh, where the place the Manjushiri Buddha reside. So next to that mountain, the holy mountain. So that is the place. So good thing about the, I always tell the people that what good thing about the, my monastery is that the, it is very hard to get the mobile signal. <laughs> <laughs> Less distraction. So I'm very happy with it. So with the kids and all the I mean, they get a very difficult to get the mobile signal. So less distraction. So they <laughs> So they do, they cannot waste the time to using the mobiles all the time because I'm a bit quite happy with it. So <laughs> yeah, anything else?
Yeah, okay. Then if you have any questions, then we'll have a question answer session. Then then we'll, yeah, then I will go. Master. Study Buddhism in many countries and all religions in nine countries. Mm -hmm. My question is would you say that Shunya and Nirvikalpa Samadhi of Hindus, you know that beyond the Sachidananda bliss, there is nothingness. Nothingness and emptiness is the real nature of the universe, which now quantum physicists are finding out. They find a small particle of atom can be in two places at the same time. And most of this, if you put it under an electron microscope, is nothingness. So would you say that in some way, Buddhist idea of emptiness is similar to Hindu idea of Shunya? Or is it different? How do you explain that. Okay. Now, idea of the emptiness, idea of the shunya. Now, now we have to look, look this point with the two way, okay? Two way, look at this point. If you look only by the wood, it can be seen with the many, I mean, the religion, it will be seen. Because I have an experience with the one time, I was in Italy and I was talking with one Archbishop, Catholic, I don't think Catholic Archbishop, and he told me one thing that even there is a word called the whiteness. Oh, whiteness, it's in the Bible, very similar with the yes. empty. Yeah, he told me. Yeah. So this is the one point. So different perspectives are looking of the nothing. There are the many different perspectives are looking at the nothingness. Now the Buddhism point, what we talk about emptiness, is as you mentioned about the quantum physics, the theory, there are a lot of the research is going on, the scientists, or the scholars, they talk about this, I'm not that interested in that part. Why I'm not interested in that part? Whether it goes with the quantum physics, whether it don't goes with the quantum physics, it doesn't going to change your life at all. It doesn't matter. You will remain the same as what you are. Most important for me is the how we can change into the people's life. How we can make our lives better, happier. So that's the most important. Buddhism talks about the emptiness mainly in terms of the selflessness. How you look at yourself, trying to look at yourself and try to find who you are, is who you are. So that is the why where the importance is. If you look at the every family issues or the every society issues, every country issues, many problems are directly related with the ego. Every problem, you go to the ego. Because of the ego, then the small issue becomes the one you make it very big. And the reality, the issue might be very small. It becomes the big because of the ego. Once you have the ego, then comes the I, then my, then you, and the your. Then the, that is the root of the conflict. Every root of the conflict. My and the your. I and the you. That's the conflict. So that's why the Buddhism point is that we try to break that ego. To break that ego, try to find the, who you are. Try to find yourself who you are. So there is a one very famous saying that the one, one master was explaining about the emptiness of the self, selflessness. Then the student told the master that uh, now I really understand the emptiness. Now I fully understand the emptiness. Then my master asked, what is the emptiness? So then the student told her, I really understand the emptiness, I really understand the selflessness, that there is a no self. There is a no I. There is a no I. There is a no self. I really understand that point very clearly. So then the, my ma then the master asked the second question, who understand that? Who understand that? <laughs> so this is the one very tricky point. When you're saying that the emptiness of the self, self-blessedness, so Buddhism, when you are looking at it, to break the ego, Buddhism, when you are breaking the ego, that's, a, that's why to understand the emptiness of the self. 
selflessness, shunya, that is more related with the way things about the self. So once you can break the ego, then you will automatically, you will feel a lot of the difference. That will be a lot of the changes in yourself. So that's why the, when your Buddha was explaining the emptiness, first thing he explained about the selflessness. When he was explaining the selflessness, this is the point, emptiness point, I don't want to talk further, because this is the retreat point. Okay, last time I talked with the Ujwan and next time we'll have one week retreat of the emptiness. It's meditating on the emptiness fully done. Because of something that the, once you meditate, it's a different experience you will have. One week you experience, then you will feel something different, understand something different, experience something different. That is the purpose of the retreat. When you go on the explain and explain and explain, there is a, one of the Tibetan very famous scholar. He said the one thing, more you express the world, you will get more far away from the realities. When you come so more closer to the reality, you will have a less word to express. More you express, more you talk, you are getting more far from the reality. So that's why retreat time, more, no talk. <laughs> so that is not my empty. So that's the last time I spoke with the Ujwal and Rexo and the Rav and the Vispok and the one week retreat in the Nepal on the first thing that I'm planning to do on the retreat on emptiness. Yeah. 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 Huh? Uh, Master Ji, uh, yes, we are the seekers. We are, required, we are seeking for the truth. We are attracted by the different schools of thought and the different schools of teachings mm. and also the different masters. Mm. We are attracted, we go here and we go there and mm. we are in the line of uh, gathering some knowledge and information and compared to uh, knowledge, whatever you call it, is it necessary or not one thing and how can we stick to one school of thought or one master? Okay. I always used to say the one thing. Dharma can practice by the two person. Dharma can be practiced by the only two person, the rest of them they cannot practice it. Two person, two kinds of the person can practice Dharma well. The first one is the stupid people. The second is the crazy people. <laughs> crazy and the stupid kids people can practice the Dharma very well. Otherwise, no one can practice the Dharma very well. Because the thing is that the Stupid and all. okay. So they are saying that when you look at the crazy people and enlightened people, there is a very little difference. Okay, <laughs> crazy people and the enlightened person. The crazy people who knows they are crazy. Mad people who know themselves they are the mad. These people are also the sane or enlightened person. Okay, sane and enlightened. Who the crazy people or mad people who realize they are the crazy or mad? They call us sane. Okay. They are going to say, so that's why two people can be to practice them all. Why I'm saying is that when you're collecting the knowledge, when you're collecting the lot of knowledge, finally you have to judge. You have to tell that which is the right knowledge. You have to know that, okay, you collect the ten different knowledge. Finally, ten different knowledge and the, you have to find it out which one is the right. You get the ten different information. Finally, you have to decide which is the right information. Finally, you have to decide, you have to realize it. Now the second question is sticking the one master or sticking, okay? First thing is uh, you just go and explore the, all the things, explore, get the, all the information. Then, second thing, then you try to find a stick on the one, okay? First you explore. Then the, how you have to stick on the one point is which changes your life's better, which change your life is more happier, that is the right message to you. People in the life, we will get a lot of the different, I mean, the spiritual practice or spiritual teachings. But once you get it, once it doesn't change you better human, once it not help you make you more happier, that means it's not affecting you. It is like a medicine. When you take the medicine, if you're getting better, what does that mean? That means the medicine is helping you. When you're eating that medicine, you're not getting better. What does that mean? Very simple, that managing is not helping you at all. So same thing spiritual is like that, which makes you more happier, which makes you more better human. That means that, that spiritual practice or advice is helping you, that it suits you. That's, that's the thing how you have to choose. 
Do the sometimes what we go do is the spiritual practice and not something like a gathering the information. Okay, when you learn the spiritual, it is not gathering the information. To gather the information, I think the Google is the best. <laughs> Just go to the Google and you will get thousands of the information at Google. That will do thousand times better than the hundred spiritual teacher. I'm sure. Google can do much better than the hundred spiritual teacher to give, giving you the information. Okay? So spiritual practice is not collecting the, all the information. To get the, some advice, you should touch to your heart and after practicing it, you change you into the better human. To change you the more happier person. That is the spiritual. That kind of the practice, you should stick on it. Whoever teach that kind of practice, that should be you choose the yes, master will stick on it like that. Okay. Mm. Teachings of Buddhism, uh, they give me a lot of, uh, of peace in my heart. Uh, but uh, there is something very impractical about Buddhism. <clears throat> like, uh, uh, so you say the nature of every human being is good, right? Mm -hmm. But in Hinduism, they say even though we are same spark, but some people are rakshasi by nature. Mm -hmm. So you can't teach them by compassion, you have to fight with them. Mm -hmm. So you guys don't believe in that probably. But now if he use the Buddhism as a <coughs> you have to think. Think about what happened to you. I mean people how to live with it. And <coughs> for me also we suffer because of some fundamentalist Islamist thing. So um, so in that sense, I mean suppose there was no India then Buddha Tibetan culture would have gone, right? So there has to be the people who have that compassion. So we, we use compassion as a first source to help ourselves. Then if not, then we have to hide, right? And you are not teaching that. And it's very impractical. Now, if you say a person has taken a vow to be bodhisattva, right, then it doesn't matter. He dies in the height, like in the name of compassion is okay. But then, at the same time, we can't preserve the culture of the Dharma, right? So it's it's very really impractical if you see in that sense. Um, and for me, I've been thinking about it. Um, like it's that's one of the reasons I can't be a really Buddhist. <laughs> and so, can you please help me to do okay. some? Yes. <laughs> okay. Sure. Maybe stop recording. Stop recording. Maybe some. I will share with some of my experience. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Or the qualities of good teacher and good student. Good teacher and good student, okay. Quality of the good teacher are the three important things for the, especially for the, the teacher, Dharma teacher. No, he should have a very good knowledge, very compassionate, and uh, he should be the well practice. Three things are very important. Very good knowledge, very compassionate, and uh, well practiced. These three are very important. The student and the master is something like that. The student, the student's sight is a very important to understand the master. is very important for the understanding the master. Master's sight, the compassion is a very important for the students. Because when these two comes, then it doesn't go very well. It is the, especially the spiritual teaching is not like the giving the coaching class, no? Coaching class, student and the master, they have the one bond between that is, if I use the very harsh word, it's a money. Money is a bonding. The school, teacher and a student, money. When the salary is the decrease, the teacher will leave the school. I, I'm not any complaining, okay, that's very fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm not complaining, but this is the handling. Mother, here in the spiritual side, master and the student bond should be based on the compassion and the understanding. That's a very important. Like a, something like an example. When you have, most of the time right now, what is happening? When you have a, some difficulties or unhappiness, or what will you do? Two ways. Whether you call the psychiatrist and get appointment. What will psychiatrist do? He, he or she will just listen to your problem. You want some, then you have to pay for listen your problem. <laughs> that is the really what is I'm doing the exactly psychiatrist job, but not having the, this degree, medical degree. Sometimes I get a call, a complaint here, 10, 15 minutes, under 30 minutes they will talk about their problems and this problem, that problem. I have to say, yes, I'm sure maybe some of the here also, maybe you have to listen to this problem. Your friend solved the problem, you're going to listen. You're doing the exactly very good job. Okay, listen. Now the time is that to listen to your problem, you need to pay. 
But the master's job is the first thing is that the really compassionate listen with the really true compassion. You have to read the difficulties. Sometimes people having the difficulties and the problems, but they cannot share with anyone. Because in the family, I think it's very difficult to share nowadays. Because your uh, kids, wife, husband, they all are busy. No? Busy. Kids are busy with the video games and the internet. Husband are busy with the job. Wives have to do somewhere, maybe a salon or whatever. And, um, so a lot of the things they have to going on. So they have no time to share with you. So this is thing, the most important thing is the master should have a very compassionate to the student. It is not something like that the master says, oh, I'm busy or like this, and then not listening to the students, I mean, the complain or the students' difficulty. That's a very, you should be very compassionate. That is a one record. Student is very important, the understanding the master is very important. For to become the good student, bright student, you have to understand the master. Understanding the master. What I mean by the understanding the master means the, what the master is. He is the free times and how he has any like of any of the his the food taste or the whatever. These all the understanding is a very important for the student for the master. The good student is the just trying to do the what the master say the right things. Okay, whatever the master say the right things, at least you try to do it. Okay. Whether you can do or cannot do, that's a totally different question. At least you try to do. Because you should know the one thing that spiritual master, they are giving you a lot of times for you. So they're trying to give you some advice. So that's why you try to do something that uh, what you, what they say the right things. That, whoever trying to do that, that is the right student. So that is the thing. If the right student and the right master should be like that. So that is the thing. So this is the one thing that what I feel the importance in the right now. Okay, in this 21st century, things are changing so fast. Things are changing so fast and right now the humans and the human relationship, if you look at this relationship, sometimes this relation seems like a, it's a very fake relation. Fake, going to very fake. Example, once you get back to the home, just you meet a husband and a wife and say that, oh, you love, oh, you just say that I love you. Once your husband or the wife not respond you back, same, you will get hurt. That means you are expecting something. When you are making that relation, it's not a genuine relation. If you really love, why you expect something back the world to say you love you? Why are you are expecting it? Now, this is something like that. Now slowly it becomes like a rule. Now you are following the rule, not something saying from the, your heart. So once you become the rule, then there is no emotion and no feelings. You are just doing it like a machine, repeating it, just doing it. So that's the thing, repeating a machine with master and a student relation, that really not like that. You should build it on like a really true feeling, true emotion, true feeling with base and the compassion, respect, understanding. That is a very, one of the new relation. That's what I built with my master, with my master. So that's why the, sometimes when you really have a, something in your mind, so you can share with your master with the trust. Something very secret with you share with your wife. Maybe your wife will tell her best friend. That best friend will tell her someone. <laughs> Tibetan, we have the one story. One story. Yes. They have yes. the one person. And the, oh, sorry, the two friends went to the went to the do the business. They went to the get the business and the ancient time. Though they carry the old I and mean, the goods to sell on the yak and they put the yak and they went to the couple of the months to do the business and the day once they get back with a huge profit. The two, they are very close to friends. So what happened is that these two close friends, the one friend told another friend in the middle of the night in the jungle, he told mm -hmm. the one thing, I, I really saw that the, we took out a huge profit. But once we get back to the village, we have to share. <laughs> so I don't want to share the profit. I want the whole profit to the myself. So that's why I'm very sorry to say that I want to kill you and get the all the profit for myself. <laughs> that friend said, okay, fine, if you want to kill me, you can kill me. But at least let me send the message to the, my children. Tell them that you killed me and they take the revenge on behalf of me. <laughs> so then the, he said, how are you going to send that message? I will send that message by the wind. Wind will carry my message. So he said, it's impossible. So that the friend said, okay, you can go on. Then he shouted and said, Mr. Wind, please carry this message to the, my son, that the, my best friend killed me in the middle of the night, in the middle of the jungle. 
Please take a revenge behalf of me. He said that and that he allowed his friend to kill. His friend killed and went back to the village and told him that his friend fell from the mountain and died. And uh, his family, and especially the old village, was very sad, but nothing can do because he died in an accident. So it went time when no one knows what happens. Time went, time went. Then after the few months later, his wife so very strange because sometimes he used to laugh without any reason. Sometimes middle of the night suddenly he used to laugh. So then the, his wife asked, really, well, what happened? You are laughing without any reason, middle of the night. So he was keeping a very secret that incident. He was laughing because of thinking that how stupid is the, his best friend sending the message by the wind. And the, still the family is not knowing the wind didn't pass the message. It is impossible. So how stupid? He was laughing. Laughing and the, what happened is that many times he was laughing. And the wife used to ask. ask. Then the one day he told the wife, I have a very, very big secret. Don't tell anyone. So I have to promise you. Why don't you? Sure. I will promise you. I will not tell anyone. <laughs> then the, what happened is that, the, then he told the wife the story. My best friend was so stupid. Actually, I killed him. He didn't fall from the mountain. I killed him. Well, then I killed him. He sent the message. Saying like the shouting in the middle of the night, in the middle of the jungle, and saying the wind to carry the, his matches. How stupid is this? He shared the only story and they told the wife that no, don't tell anyone. Okay, the <laughs> wife said, I will promise I will not tell anyone. After the few weeks later, his wife told her best friend that story and tell the wife, her best friend not to tell anyone. That best friend told the whole other best friend. After the one, some months later, all the village know that the, oh. he killed his best friend. <laughs> then the, his son took the revenge. That is a story. Actually, it's happening everywhere like that. Now, once you have the secret. Now, even sometimes, I'm not so sure whether you're very confident to tell your wife also. <laughs> So this is something like that trust. That is the trust. No, so something like that you will. So that is a something like because I have organized. There is a one. Actually, there is a, some students. They came from uh, Shanghai. Shall the Shanghai the place? Shanghai the place to meet me in Nepal. So one the lady told me that actually she wanted to come to Nepal, and there is a her friend and the day just discussed each other and how to convince the her husband. Then the one lady told me, actually she wanted to come to Nepal and she told the her husband that the, her friend wants to go to Nepal and she has to accompany the whole friend. <laughs> you know the whole the make of the stories. <laughs> this is the, right now it's happening. But the my point is that the my point is that the, in the life. So that's why the master and the student, something like that, the most important thing is a thing you need to trust in. The trust will come when they have compassion. The compassion and the understanding is the master's the most important key point. So that's why there's something like that. The master is a, something like that. Sometimes a way you can share the sum of the, your confusion. Confusion. In the mind, sometimes the most difficult thing is the confusion. No? Confusion and the doubt is a, one of the first things in our life. When you have a confusion, when you have the doubt, it makes you so hurtful. You will not know what to do, what to do. So this is something we can share with the master, <coughs> discuss with the master. Because the master is the something which can you look at this point from a different perspective. You will see the something from the, your perspective. Master can see from the another perspective. So that is something you are learning to the some issue from the different perspective. That is the which the master can help you. Okay? Yes? Okay. Uh, at this moment I wish to have a little more clarification regarding uh, compassion and sympathy. No. We do wish to our capacity and consciousness to a sick person or a needy or a poor person or whatever it may be as a man or animal, whatever it may be. We do wish according to situation or circumstance. Mm -hmm. We become happy mm -hmm. to some extent. After that, our consciousness says it is not happy. I mean, it is not complete. You have to do little more and more. Mm -hmm. Then we become attached to that. Mm -hmm. Then in that situation, we cannot proceed further and uh, console ourselves or satisfy ourselves. That becomes more or less their attachment. Mm. Am I rightly asking this or not? Or what, what to do at these uh, uh, situations? Okay. How to overcome this? Okay. So the attachment issues. Actually, 
One student asked, one student asked the master, can we send an email? So in the monastery, okay, in the monastery, one monk asked the master, one monk asked the master that, uh, can we send the email? The master told the student monk, yeah, sure, you can send the email, but without attachment. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so attachment, when you come to the attachment, first you have to understand what does the actual attachment here we mean, okay, Buddhism, what we mean, attachment. Attachment is a something love and the attachment, it is a really very complicated thing. Why it is complicated, I am saying is that when you get attached to the someone, slowly you will start a possession idea, possession. That idea it will come when you are attached to something, possession. So attachment is something like that when you really love someone or the whatever, when you do the compassion or love someone, you will think the happiness of the other. When you start to think that your happiness more, your enjoyment, your happiness more, that's become the attachment. Example, when you are something, you are, when you really feel something like a, you are more happy, when you are getting the more care about the, your own happiness, that is becoming a more attachment. When you are caring and the more others' happiness, that is true love. But the one thing we are not knowing, the one very simple secret, if you look at your family, if your wife, children are happy, automatically, definitely you will become happy. It is not that important that the first you think that your happiness before. First you think that your children's or your wife's or the, your parents' happiness. Definitely you will become more happy. Then you will become more happy. That's the most important part. Example. My own experience, the one example. Maybe this is true. Three, four years back, I'm having the project of the building the monastery and the way I'm having the very discussion about how we have to face that, that the monastery, I mean the building, no? monastery institute building, how to face it. They're having a very heat argument in my family because I want to face the one direction and they want to face another direction before the building, the oldest buildings. So it is quite heat argument. Heat means are quite tough. I mean the discuss, and the heat discussion when uh, my brother and my father is one side, first of my mother is on my father's side and I'm the one side. Then it didn't get any reason, so I stopped the discussion and I went from the room, maybe 10-15 minutes of discussion, a little bit heat discussion. You, you get my point, no? heat discussion, I left the room. When I get alone, my mother came out and he told me, that my mother told me, you decide whatever really you want. Don't look at what my father wants, don't look at what my brother wants, you just go on that. You, that's, you just decide. So I really feel that my mother's love, no? that a very strong love. So once she is having that strong love, even she just left the whole own ego. First she was not arguing with my point. Later on the whole love towards me much strong. So that's why he dropped the whole ego and he dropped the whole his idea. So that is the really very important message I got that. So that's why in something like that, when you love someone, so when you love someone and when you really, attachment or something because you come to so your ego or the thinking something or the, your own happiness, the attachment comes. When you really love someone, you care for the other's happiness more. That's the most important. I always used to say the one thing, that a very, very long back, quite long ago, that is maybe 10 or 12 years back, one gentleman asked me that uh, he's going to marry his fiance. So I told him that why you are going to marry your fiance. He told me that uh, if he marry the, his fiance, actually he asked me the prayer for his marriage life. <laughs> So then I asked him, why are you going to marry your fiancé? He told me if he marry his fiancé, he will become more happy. I told him that you are thinking very wrong. You should not think that way. You should think that if you marry your fiancé, she will become more happy. You should think that way. That's the difference with the attachment and the love. When you are an attachment for your happiness, you are the man. Your happiness, you are brought to the children. So your happiness, children should get the more marks for your happiness. That is attachment. To the happiness of the, your children, happiness of the, your wife, if you think that way, that is a genuine love. That is the difference that a Buddhism what we are saying. Now you are saying the sympathy of the compassion to the others. When you do the compassion, sympathy for the others, one thing it's very important to know that you are limit. When you say the compassion, when you see the hundred beggars, it doesn't mean that when you have the compassion you have to give the whole the beggar. It doesn't mean that at all. 
Even if you see the one baker, compassion does not mean that you have to give the money at all. Sometimes people get a misunderstanding with that. Compassion merely means the feelings of the other's pain. That is a real compassion. Sometimes comes the baker, you give the money because of the dead bakers makes you so nuisance, makes you so irritated. So just move the baker in front of the, your sight, you just leave the money. That is not a compassion. That's this, that's something you are attached to the yourself. You want to the comfort zone, maybe beggar entered into the your that comfort zone and you want to remove the beggar from the your zone and you are just giving the money. That is another com compassion. But real compassion, feeling something in the other's pain. Feel something of the other difficult, that is a real compassion. So today, yeah, that's why the, today when I coming from the train, I saw the one beggar and they give something. So someone asked me that, uh, do you, I feel the sorry for the beggar because beggar is a limb. Uh, yeah, so sorry for the that. So, then, so I told that the <coughs> limb and uh, something like an accident happened. I don't feel that sorry and the compassion to what he happens, but I feel the more compassion of the family, how they are getting the difficulties. That I always feel. When someone is a suffering, that is a suffering, I know that. But the more I feel the compassion toward the, that person, the family, how they are having the difficulties. Because in my life, when I meet the people having the, some problems, more than that, I saw that the, their family worry more about that person. Person who are having the suffering, the difficulty, slowly they will start to accept that their condition. Sometimes for their parents, it's very difficult to accept that. So that's I feel more compassion. Okay, so that's the thing. Okay, so maybe I'll stop here. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much. And the one again thing is that, uh, yeah, so if you are interested about uh, that uh, rigid program, so you can contact with the uh, Ujwal or Leko, okay, that uh, retreat program. So one week retreat in the Nepal about the emptiness. But the most important thing is that uh, time may be a little bit flexible, time can be a little bit flexible. Okay, that is the one thing. Second thing is that uh, many students, with so a close by student, me and who works in my foundation, they all tell me or complain me about the one thing. Everything I change in the last minute. Okay, <laughs> that I don't know really. I do like that. Okay, but all many of the close my student who works in my foundation, different country foundation, they all complain me that I change everything in the last minute. Might be okay. Just know that. Okay, that can may happen. So everything I might change in the last minute. Okay, don't expect that the, everything's. I decided and I will, I will do that, okay? No, I can uh, change everything at last minute, okay? Just, uh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.